Hello everyone, Arxy here. You've just caught me coming out of Costco. We've been down here getting a very early lunch. We are here on Chili Whack, British Columbia. Now this is the four times map. We did a map tour on just the other day. And I've decided we're going to jump in and try and tackle a little bit of a challenge. But uh, we did have to get some lunch before we do that. And we're going to go for a little bit of a look around the map and uh, take a look at our farm or farms as the case may be at the moment look at how things are set up and what the aim for this series is going to be so uh, we'll just jump into the pickup here and i'll bring up the pda have a look at the map and then we're going to go for a little bit of a drive around the different farms and check things out before we might get into a little bit of some wheat harvest we'll see how time goes all right so here we are we'll just bring the pda up and uh, i'll show you around there is the map in general now if we just jump into the buy menu so i can show you what our land is and you can see we have a selection of fields all around the map and if you're familiar with the map you will know this one this one this one this one and this one those five all contain the cattle pastures or the uh, dairy barns or whatever you want to call them that are on this map those are the five main cattle farms so we own all of those and then we have these uh blocks down here so if we just jump back out and have a look here you can see we've got this array of fields here all with soybeans in a few fields here with soybeans in then we've got another field down here again with soybeans we've got some corn down here that field we've got a couple of small fields of wheat here and another field of wheat up with this one and this uh barn up here this plot of land doesn't have any fields so the premise behind this series is we've come to Chilliwack, we've inherited these dairy farms or uh, we've bought them or come to be part of the management for them. Whatever way you want to sell it, uh, we now own all this land and all these dairy farms and the intention is to amalgamate all of those dairy pastures, everything into a more central feedlot down here on this plot. This is going to become our main farmyard which requires a whole lot of development into it. Uh, so we need to make some money. We do have, we just jump out of there, $288,000. Uh, but if we can get things set up, we can clear some land, get some crops harvested, uh, get some cattle producing some food and things like that, we can uh, start to think about how we are going to centralize the farm into one location. And uh, we will offload the dairy farms we already own so we can make some money off those and use the value of those properties to help us build what we want to do but uh, we're going to head on out now just while we're doing this we're just going to go for a drive along here and head down towards the main yard uh, and check out these farms on the way because i want to show you all the different equipment we've inherited or have set up on these farms uh, but just some of the other mods we are using i have got maze plus for the very first time ever using maze plus either on 19 or 22 farming simulator 22 uh, this will be the first time i've ever used maze plus so we're going to give that a go I also have the enhanced animals uh, feature that recently came out so our animals will die as time goes by uh, and we also have the chance of different offspring from our animals as well so incredibly excited to try that one out not one I have used yet uh, just thinking through those are probably the main two that I did just want to point out we've got a whole lot of features of the other mods that we'd normally use but those are certainly two of the uh, ones that I think will have the biggest impact on our gameplay but I think if we head down the road here a little bit further, we'll get to one of the first dairy farms. I uh, can't remember if there's any equipment at that one. I think we might have a tractor and a feed mixer. But we'll go ahead and have a look at that, and uh, then we'll carry on our trip around the rest of the farms. So we're just heading on down here to this, uh, you can see in here on the left. Now one thing with this map is there isn't really any defined access ways or tracks or anything like these for any of these farmyards which for anyone else who's playing it uh, was actually quite a cool feature because it does give you the chance to do some landscaping and come up with a solution for that however you might like but down here uh, we do have the Kubota M7 and uh, the front loader there on the front of that and a Silo King uh, feed mixer now you can see as we stand a little bit closer there it gives us all the menu for uh, Mates Plus on what our mix is and uh, what we need to do to make a good mix which is very nice. Uh, looking forward to giving that a go. Now we don't have any food. We are going to have to get that set up. That is one of our priorities. We do already have some animals. We've got 50 cows in here. Uh, you can see there. So we do already have some of those. Uh, obviously we're not producing anything like that uh, at this stage and fortunately uh, they're not going to die by not having any food. So uh, that is that. Now we're going to jump back in and just have a look here on the PDA and show you exactly where we are right now. So we're down here, field 195, which is the soybean field around this cattle pasture. Uh, we might head on back up the road. I'll make sure I stick to the right-hand side uh, my 
Kiwi instincts came into play when we pulled out of the Costco and I realized we drove halfway down here on the wrong side of the road. So we'll make sure we try and avoid doing that in the future. But we'll head all the way along here. We'll go and take a look here at this cattle pasture. Uh, we do have a piece of equipment there. Uh, I won't bother going and looking at this one. Maybe we will. We'll see. We might drive down past here. In fact, we will because I want to head on up here. We've got a whole lot more equipment up at this farm. Before we spin back around, come down past that one and we'll end up down here at the main yard and having a look at those different bits of farm equipment. So it wasn't meant to be a map tour, but it is certainly turning into one of those as we look at what's set up where and uh, how the farm is going to be run. So let's carry on our moves. We're just pulling up here on the next of our cattle barns. Uh, we've got the cornfield in here on the right, which I think we might use that to make some silage very early on. Uh, and just pulling in here, again, no tracks or anything like that. I really should have uh, added some in, and maybe we will before next time. You can see there we've got a uh, cattle star animal trailer, uh, which means we do have a couple of trucks parked somewhere, but that is there, that is for hauling our animals around. And over here, you can see we've got another 50 animals uh, in this barn as well. There we are. So again, no food, no water. We do need to get all of those sort of things in order uh, as soon as we can. So lots of priorities for what we're wanting to do here on the farm. Uh, and like I said, we do have the corn there wrapped around this pasture, but I think we might come down. And in fact, there is a, uh, there's a silage put out the back as well we can throw that into. So that might be one of our very early tasks uh, to do before we go too much further, is getting that chopped up and uh, turned into some silage. But that, that is there. Now we're going to carry on along the road and head on down to the next of the farms. We won't bother stopping at this farm, but uh, those are the couple of wheat fields just there that we do have ready. We've got another 50 animals down at this uh, barn here. We've got another tractor, another loading wagon or feeding wagon. Uh, we've got the John Deere 40 series there with the front end loader on it. Uh, but other than that, the silage bunker there as well, or a few silage bunkers actually in behind. Uh, but I think that might be one of the very first ones that we might try and offload because if we can get in there and get that wheat harvested and taken off, uh, and the animals moved, we might look to sell that farm very early on and uh, use that to reinvest it back into our main yard. Let's carry on down this way and uh, have a look at the next one. This is one of the more major farms with a lot more uh, buildings and equipment. In fact, we've got a name there, Ravenwood Farm. And we do have the cattle in here as well. But this has been set up and we've inherited this. This is the base of the silage operations that we have. So we'll just pop out and have a quick look around the equipment. Uh, we've got the case wheel loader over there, uh, it's got a nice big fork or silage uh, handler there on the front, so that's going to come very handy when we need to do some compaction on the pits. We've got a couple of uh, Maya forage boxes, so they will be very handy for working when we are running uh, some silage. And as well as that, depending on where we're working, we've got the two Mack trucks over here uh, with a couple of big silage trailers on them. One is the Arctic's trailer there, and I think the other one is the silage boss trailer on the other side there you go lizard silage boss so some good capacity in all of those uh, for when we are getting into doing some silage and obviously the main thing you do need is a good forage harvester so we've gone and got ourselves or have inherited again we'll carry on a 990 class jaguar uh, we've got the grass pickup there on the front so we can do some grass silage if that's what we choose we've also got a, a rather nice and wide uh, nine meter wide corn head uh, for running through the maze and we've also got the chopper header here the direct disc five meter wide for running through any uh whole crop silage we might want to do out of can canola wheat those kind of things so depending on what crops we might grow in the future or how we might want to tackle our silage we've got that option as well again not something i've actually done in the farming simulator and of course i know maze plus does provide the opportunity for different types of silage so it will be interesting to try those out but this is sort of the main silage operation this is where everything's set up but you can see as we get around the farms we've got equipment scattered all over the place and i do want to get that consolidated and brought back into a central location so uh that is the intention with the main farm but anyhow one more farm yard to go and check out for animals and uh, then we will be into the main area where we're looking at building and developing or further developing our farm well, just one other thing before we do leave uh, no animals at this farm we do have the animal pasture down there so uh, it could be an option to relocate those cattle from down the road and bring them up to this one so we can get that yard sold off once we've harvested that wheat so that could be a way to make a use of that we're going to carry on down the road here and uh, look at the very last of those cattle yards and here we are this is the fifth and uh, i guess final cattle barn and we'll just wait for this car to go past 
and pop in here. This is really where all the haymaking equipment is. Uh, some of it would be useful for silage, particularly if you're doing the grass silage and that. But just as we drive around here, you will see we've got a swather there, uh, a tedder, a V-rake baler and a uh, trailer there for picking up the bales. So that will be used for uh, maybe some hay, maybe some silage. It will depend how we get on with that. We do have the other cattle pasture there. We've got another 50 head of animals in the, that one as well. Uh, this one's probably not quite at its prior, higher priority to offload. Uh, while it doesn't have any arable fields with it, it is quite close to where the main yard is going to be. So this could be one where potentially we could develop uh, a little bit further, maybe even put another cattle pasture in, or uh, this run is a slightly isolated from the other one. But we're just going to carry on down here just a little bit. Uh, these green fields up here on the right are the start of our fields that have soybeans in them, so I think it is the first three here on our right, just starting off right there. So this field here, and running along here to the others, uh, are all the ones we own. But overgrown, we might have to get in and do some uh, bushwhacking to get rid of all that. But one, two, and then this field here on the right as well. And then in here on the left is where we are looking to base ourselves and really develop our farmyard and build things up as we come in here. You'll see we do have a name for this farm. It is Evergreen. There we go. Evergreen Farmstead, established 1895. Don't know why it's got a pig on there. We might have to look at changing that. But you can see our big soybean fields out the back here for these ones. So uh, lots of space. Once those are harvested, we can get in and take some of that out and develop this further. We've got lots of space in here. We do need a grain silo. We don't have one of those anywhere. Uh, we need some storage space for equipment as well. You can see pretty much everything is out here in the open in the weather without too much protection. So let's take a quick look around what we have. We're in Canada. It seems appropriate to use a Borgo drill. So we do have the uh, smaller of the Borgo drills there. Uh, about a 9 meter operation I think. Might be a little bit wider. Gone for something unique for us with the tractors. We do have the New Holland T8 with the uh, tracked rear tires or rear wheels. Whatever you want to call it. And the dual uh, row crops on front. So it's something a little bit different. That is going to be doing a lot of our seeding and uh, work like that. Got the John Deere planter here as well. So that will be uh, handy for planting corn. Big tillage workhorse. Uh, again, we're in Canada. It seems appropriate to have a versatile. So we have got the 2425 there. And that will be doing a lot of our big bulk tillage. It is our biggest horsepower tractor. Uh, around the corner here, we've got the Case Ecotill. Uh, that will be doing all our plowing. And we've got the uh, 46... Uh, 465 speed till. Case 465 speed till uh, for our tillage work. We've also got a Borgo cultivator there. So a couple of different options for uh, how we are going to work up the fields. And of course the Versatile and the T8 there as our main uh, main workhorses. A little Strobel BT200 bulk tender that's got two hoppers in it. So we can run seed and fertilizer if we need to around with that. Uh, a couple of trailers here. One set of trailers. The Dopka Legacy. Bottom hoppers, so looking forward to giving those a try out when we get some crops, and that shouldn't be too far away. Header, 30 foot wide header there, New Holland header, and that obviously goes on to this older New Holland TR99 combine. So that might be something, if we are going to keep running these arable crops and having a uh, annual harvest, might be something we might look at upgrading at some stage. It's something a little bit newer, it's probably the oldest piece of equipment on the farm. We're very fortunate to have as well the John Deere 4940 spreader and we've also got the sprayer attachment for that as well so that's quite a modern piece of equipment on the farm here which is uh, very helpful very good to have and uh, we've got an old JM grain cart here as well not very big not a huge capacity but the uh, combine doesn't have a very big capacity either so that pretty much rounds out all of our equipment of course we do have the uh, we do have the f450 and the gooseneck trailer here as well uh, so we do want to think about possibly having to get a skid steer at some stage uh, so a few different things there that we might look at buying as we develop uh, but that is for all intents and purposes that is a rundown of our operation at the moment like i said the plan is to develop a bit of a feedlot here i want to get this into sort of a bigger consolidated feedlot uh, using the schultz modding as a feedlot buildable feedlot mod um, we're going to try and build up something there and get as many animals down here as we can 
Of course we'll be waiting until these crops are harvested because we don't want to be digging in any potential money. Crops are green at the moment. Green is the colour of money so we will be wanting to harvest those and get into them. But speaking of harvesting, let's go and jump into the combine. We're going to run on down to one of those wheat fields and we're going to make a start on that now. So we'll get everything sorted out. Uh, I don't think we're going to worry about taking the grain cart down for that. Uh, I think we can just take a truck down. In fact we have to go and get the trucks from over at the other farm. So perhaps if we run over to that farm we'll go and harvest the wheat field over there and uh, we can come back with one of the trucks to pick up the trailers. So we'll uh, get everything sorted out and see you over there. Well I can tell you I'm already looking forward to getting things a little bit closer to home. Uh, this has taken a little bit longer or a wee while actually to get driven over here. Uh, we had to bring the header over separately. This combine doesn't even have a hitch to pull its own header trailer. So we had to bring that over with the uh, pickup and then we've taken the pickup back to go and get the combine here and uh, get things hooked up and then we're going to have to grab the truck and head back over with one of those to go and uh, bring the trailer back. There we are. We've got things here now so we might just jump straight in and make a start harvesting. Now I am going to keep the straw uh, obviously. It might come in handy with our animals and being able to give it to them for bedding and things like that possibly for padding out our food mixture. Uh, I need to get my head around whether that is something we can do with Maze Plus or not. But I'm just going to jump straight into harvesting right now then we'll worry about going and getting a trailer when we need to uh, get the hopper emptied out. There we are, we've got things all unfolded. Nice little animation actually on this little uh, this New Holland. Very nicely done. Turn that on there and uh, we will just make a start here into the field. Make sure we've got our uh, swath dropping turned on. There it is. We're getting that out as well. Now we do have GPS on this combine as well. Uh, probably a little bit of a retrofit model to the uh, older combine but it is something that will make things a whole lot easier for us at this stage uh, but like I said it would be good to be able to upgrade this and look to get something a little bit newer at some stage but uh, we're coming along here six miles per hour in a small field with this size combine actually doesn't feel too slow at all Well, there we are. I thought we might have managed to get to the end of the row before we were full, but uh, we are chocker. But that's gone quite well, actually, for a start. I'm enjoying this little combine. It's doing a great job. It's uh, nice and efficient, nice and fast, and uh, we've mowed through that field very quickly. So we're going to head on over. We'll go and grab the truck, and uh, we'll go and get one of the trailers. Bring that back over here so we can get this uh, dumped out. We might as well uh, get things all set up and ready to offload. All good there opened out and uh, once we're back with the truck we'll be able to, should be able to, hopefully, drive in straight under that, looks like it's going to be high enough but we'll get that turned off and uh, we'll go and pick one of the Macs and uh, head on over and grab one of those grain trailers. Alright, back here with the trailer, now we did only bring the lead trailer, we didn't bother bring the whole uh, B train set up. We'll just get swung in here and uh, we'll go and pull in underneath the auger. Hopefully we'll be able to start getting things unloaded. Uh, we should have enough space though in this trailer. Certainly for this field, it'll be interesting with the other two fields we've got to do. Uh, which I wasn't actually planning on getting into today. But uh, I think, there we go, we'll need to hop into the combine to turn the auger on. But uh, I think we might just about be able to get in and get started on those. Here we go, unloading, we're getting our grain, our wheat there, into the hopper. So uh, that's all going very well. It's going to take a wee while to unload, it's not the fastest auger, but uh, we'll let it do its thing and then we'll go and carry on in this field.
And there we are, field done. Now that did not take too long at all. We must have ended up with just under 19,000 litres of wheat off that. I think it's about 12,500 litres in the trailer already. And uh, we've got 6,500 litres on board here. So there we go. And that last little bit picked up and uh, that has gone much faster than I thought. Uh, this field was a little bit smaller than I was expecting. And we've got through it pretty quick with this 30 foot header. Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to figure out, I don't know if there's a hitch on the back of the truck. If there's a hitch on the back of the truck, we'll be able to uh, take the header behind and we could go down and start doing one of the other fields, but uh, otherwise we're going to be stuck over here without actually having a, uh, without actually having any way of getting the header across to where we need to be. Let's just leave that going. Is there any hitch down here? No, there is not. Right, well, let's uh, give that some thought. We might have to go and grab the pickup and bring that back over here and uh, then see about getting that header moved. Alright there we are, just enough to fill up the uh, front hopper and put just a few hundred litres into the rear hopper. So we'll go over and we'll get this header taken off and uh, then we'll make some plans, try and uh, relocate down to the next field. Well we've made it down here, the wife came in very handy and uh, she brought the pickup over, she ran us down here, or she actually came and picked us up down here once we brought the combine down, uh, took us back to grab the truck and she brought the header down here on the trailer, so very helpful, always nice, get that unfolded, always nice to have a very helpful partner in crime when it comes to farming, uh, someone who doesn't mind running back and forth and doing those little tasks uh, when you need a hand. So we're going to jump straight in and carry on harvesting in this field and the other one. Hopefully we've got enough space in the truck. There was uh, 19,000 litres in total and I think we've got space for about 38,000 in there. So uh, hopefully we can get all of this harvested and put in there as well. I'm not sure how we're going to go on with yields or anything like that. Uh, now just speaking of yields, we do have precision farming as well. We are running that on this save so uh, we will have those kind of things to consider as well in the future. But we're just going to carry on, jump into a uh, little bit of a montage here and we'll see when we're done with the harvest. Well it's not a bad problem to have having too much grain but uh, we did make a little bit of a mistake not bringing over both the trailers. Uh, we've managed to fill this one up here and we've got another full hopper here on the combine with still another two or three passes over in that other little field. But what we're going to do, we're just going to turn this off once we get over it and leave that there. Now I've been having a chat to one of the local operators uh, and just down the road we've got a silo which they use for loading the trains and uh, there's some storage space in there and I've said very nicely that we can go down and actually store some of our crops down in there. They're not being used by anyone else at the moment. Uh, most stuff's either being stored on farm or going direct to market so uh, we can head on down here into where the train yard and everything is and uh, drop our grain off there so we've got 37 and a half thousand litres here another 12 and a half thousand litres in the hopper it's 50,000 litres 
I say it's not a bad little effort out of those three fields, considering there was uh, no fertiliser, there was weeds in some, pH levels aren't the best, so uh, not a bad little yield. So they said I should just be able to drive to the big building down by the train yard. I think that's the one here on the end. Uh, there is an unload hopper. We can drive through and go over top of that and we should just be able to leave our crop in here. Let's just get driven in here. We should get, hopefully, there we are, trigger to be able to start unloading wheat. In fact, if we come right in here, you can see, there we are, that is going through there. And we're getting that emptied out, and in fact that emptied out incredibly quick. Be able to change to the next one right next to us here. Get the last of the wheat out of that one. Look at that. Considering how quickly, how slowly it took for the uh, for them to fill up in the first place, that's uh, incredibly fast to empty out. All right, well that's good. Good to know. We've got this uh, resource here we can tap into if we need it. So let's head on back down and get the last of that field finished off. We've got back here, we're just running along the last pass here. We've uh, emptied out the combine into the truck already, that was 12,500 litres with another three or so thousand litres here to go and 15.5 on top of the 37.5 that we did have. So uh, not a bad, not a bad little yield. I'm actually mildly surprised how well we did. Now this combine does seem to get a little bit of a bounce going on with it. I'm not sure what causes that. That's not ideal, but uh, it is what it is. Might just be something, being a bit of an older piece of equipment, might not have quite the nice ride that the newer cabs do. So, uh, like I said, let's look at trying to get this replaced at some stage. We're not in a big hurry to do that, but there we are. These fields are done, the other field is finished, and we've now got a whole lot of straw to bail up for the next episode. I was planning on only actually harvesting one of these fields for this episode. Hopefully my rambling hasn't carried us on for too long, but uh, it was good to get those all done and make a good positive start on this series. Anyhow, we're just going to pop on over here, we'll get this emptied into the truck and go and get that dumped down into the uh, same storage spot down at the railroad and uh, we'll be wrapping things up. And there we go, that is the combine all emptied. So we'll get this tarp put on over, we will go and get this dropped off. Uh, we'll get the combine and everything back to the yard with the help of our fantastic wife uh, to ship everything back and forth, run shuttles and whatnot. Uh, but there we go. First episode done and dusted here on Chili Wick. Hope you have enjoyed that one. Uh, any suggestions, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think or uh, what you think we could add to it. Just to make it even better than it already is. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.